My man CVV, Chris Van Vliet, had a really solid interview this week with Jack Evans. Jack Evans, of course, half of the tag team, TH2, the hybrid two with Angelico in AEW. Well, that tag team is no more as Jack Evans has been released from AEW. Uh, Not released in the WWE sense, just his contract wasn't renewed, his contract's up. And they, uh, AEW kindly decided to not re-sign. Now, they did re-sign Angelico, which is uh, odd. Um, But I think if you listen to this full interview, you're going to kind of get a better picture of it. Take a listen to this clip here from Jack Evans. kind of explains the situation a little bit better on why he ended up on the outs, but Angelico ended up staying. So me and Angelico were both stuck south of Mexico, got closed for the, the COVID restrictions. And we had this four-month layoff. And then I came back, had one match. And then in practice, before match, I actually got my face broken again. And then I had another month and a half or two-month layoff. And I feel like after that, I never, like, came back, like, to full, full. Like, I really feel like I deteriorated. Like, I, I, I there's some, I, I can't even blame it on ring rust. I don't know what happened. But I just, I feel like after that, I never came back. We never had the same momentum. But, but it wasn't one of those things where, like, I felt like I was wrestling good and the momentum just didn't get started. Like, I felt like I was really, I had deteriorated in the ring. And on the, like, it sounds weird, but it started giving me like these self-confidence problems. Then also, and this is what happened to me all, is that salary contract, I feel like made me a bit soft. Cause like there was even a little while where like I got a bit like plump, or, like, I don't know what the nice way to put it or whatever. And like, so I just kind of fell off after that layoff. And I feel like I only really started getting back on the ball, like towards the end. And by then I think the company had kind of already made up its mind on me or whatever because i thought this was a really great interview not just because chris van vliet always does great interviews just props to chris if you're not up on chris van vliet this is kind of why i do this show sometimes is to uh, spread some of these great podcasts around i know not everybody has time in their day to listen to a bajillion podcast i hope i help with that and kind of point you in the direction of good ones to listen to uh, not just good episodes and good interviews from time to time, but just the solid consistency of some of these interviewers. Chris Van Vliet is a top tier, top, top, top wrestling interviewer. So if you ever are out on the uh, YouTubes searching around for pro wrestling interviews to watch, you will never go wrong clicking on a Chris Van Vliet podcast. In this one, No different. Jack Evans, like I said, not just because Van Vliet's a good interviewer, but Jack was humble, open, honest, uh, realistic, vulnerable. He was a really good conversationalist, you know. He he seemed like he, he was fun to talk to. You know, they had a lot of other conversations in the podcast that I highly recommend. You just go back and listen to the whole thing. Talking about, Evan's talking about living in Mexico and being sh- uh, shaken down by the cops and harassed and, you know, that that kind of stuff. But just his sense of self-awareness over the whole being cut from AEW or not renewed from AEW you know, putting it on himself, just saying like, look, I got, there was lots of things, you know, after my injury, I got, I wasn't the same. Uh, I got lazy with a big full-time regular contract that kind of, you know, I got chubby. I couldn't move around in the ring like I used to. I got blown up quicker. I didn't try as hard. Uh, you know, he put it all on himself. He literally had not one bad word to say about AEW or Tony Khan or about them not renewing him, but renewing Angelico. And that's, and Jack Evans even said, and that's kind of, he's like, when you look around and you're part of a tag team and every meeting you're in and every skit that you do and every segment that you're on and everything you've done in that entire company since day one has been with your partner Angelico. And then all of a sudden Angelico gets re-signed and you do not. The problem is not Tony Khan and AEW. The problem might be you. 
And it was. Uh, you know, I'm, I was surprised that Anna Helico got re-signed. Just because, I mean, he is a great talent. Like, if you watch the guy in the ring, he's smooth as butter. He's clean. He's got that weird, uh, almost like an Alex Wright-ness to him where he's he's got this weird charisma where he, he's got these, like, weird little dance He's like his own in his own space, you know. He's I, it's it's hard to describe, but if you just watch the man, he's living in a whole different world than everybody else. It seems like you know what I mean in a fun way. He's like a raver, um, but to me, he's not. I mean, he's not a draw. I, I especially with all the big signings and probably more big signings to come that seem to be almost every week at this point. Uh, it's time to start letting some of those older contracts go. Um, there's something to be said for loyalty to, you know, guys that got you to the dance. You know, you also don't, you know, you, when you start your company with a bunch of like, I mean, it really was like the best of the indies, but it was indies, you know, it was the indie guys and you work with what you got and they were able to, you know, quickly get to a point where they were signing lots of former WWE talent and big stars and that sort of thing. Um, so you don't necessarily just go back and then get rid of all of your indie talent that got you to the dance. So something's to be said for, hey, you worked hard while you were here. I'll give you another contract. But at the same time, I, I mean, Angelico would have been one I, I just would have let TH2 go to completely. They're fairly useless on the show. Uh, they don't really contribute anything to it. Uh, sometimes it's not just about your in-ring talent. It's what are you bringing to the table? And I, I just don't know that there's anything that Angelico provides to the show that they can't get from somebody else. So that was a surprise. But, hey, you know, I'm not going to knock people for having jobs either or getting paid, so good on him. But, you know, Jack Evans didn't go down the road that we seen like a, like a, like a big swall do. By the way, Big Swall, who the fuck are you to go out there and even have an opinion to begin with? You know what I mean? Everybody's going to talk shit and stuff. Why don't you be grateful? Because people like Swall and Marco Stunt and fucking Jack Evans are lucky to have jobs on TV with a major company. Uh, it's not to say that they're not talented and they haven't worked hard and yada, 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 yada. But there's only so many spots. There's only so much money to go around. And this is national television. I hate to be a Jim Cornette here, but guys like a Marco Stunt, for example. I mean, yeah, look at the guy. He should have never been on TV to begin with, let alone, uh, you know, like, oh, re-sign him? No, absolutely not. Uh, he was a good fit as, like, a mascot, I guess, for Jurassic Express, but... He just, and maybe like a New Day, uh, not New Day, but like a New Day uh, um, Spike Dudley in a way, you know, like the little runt of the litter that gets, takes all the big bumps and gets the heat, you know, allows the heels to get heat on, on Jurassic Express or whatever, but kick him to the curb, don't need him. Jack Evans, though, like, I'm, I, can, I really don't care about Jack Evans as a, you know, like, I don't say that to be mean or heartless or anything like that. It, I, it's not ill intention. It's just he's not. He doesn't do anything for me as a performer. Is what I'm getting at. He's not. Uh, he's not a draw for me. Oh, I'm excited to see this Jack Evans match. No, um, never has been the case. Never will be the case. But he seems like a good dude. Like I, I, I guess I didn't know enough about him. And this was a fun little interview. Like I said, not just for the release from AEW, but also just. You know, the other stories that he had to tell and, and how humble he was and honest and open he was. And you don't get a lot of that. In a business of egos, what you end up getting is a whole lot of shit talking and a whole lot of, I'm the biggest star and Tony Khan held me down and Tony Khan this and Tony Khan that and AEW this and AEW that. Blah, 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 blah. Everybody's got something bad to say when they're not getting that paycheck anymore. And everybody's got something good to say when they are getting their paycheck. Except for MJF, of course, as we discussed earlier. But go listen to the interview. That's about all I got to say about it. Jack Evans, you know, uh, open, honest, humble, and, and puts the blame on himself. And a uh, great conversationalist and a, and a fun interview. So CVV knocks it out of the park as per usual. And on to the next. Let me tell you something, brother. You can check out full episodes each and every Sunday right here on this channel, dude. Don't forget to like, 
don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to take your vitamins and say your prayers, brother.